Okay, in the uh, last class, I explained about the exchange coupling, which one is the uh, most important concept to understand ferromagnetism. Uh, and I want to just briefly uh, review the exchange coupling again, because uh, that is very, very important concept. Okay, so when we explain the ferromagnetic uh, coupling, we assumed some, uh, some kind of molecular field between atomic moment or spins. And that coupling uh, cannot be explained by the classical physics. That means uh, it's not a, a simple dipole interaction. There is uh, something uh, very strong interaction exists to explain the experimental observation like a large AQ temperature. So uh, we explain the origin of such coupling and we have a uh, new kind of coupling called exchange coupling. And that uh, is came from the electron interactions and the indistinguishability of the electrons. And as we uh, already uh, learned in our last class, the Hamiltonian of the two uh, coupled electrons can be written down by this form. This one is the for single atoms, and there is a Coulomb interaction between two electrons. And let's say uh, the non-interacting atomic Hamiltonian is called H zero, and can have we have an additional term. It's, it's just like a Coulomb form, a Coulomb interaction. And uh, the total energy can be uh, decomposed by the E0, the uh, non-interacting energy terms, and the Coulomb interactions. And the Coulomb interaction is written by the interacting potentials and the inner product between two wave functions. So with this, in, uh, interaction term, we have a little shift of the energy compared to the non-interacting electrons. But uh, we have a very uh, important physical properties called the Pauli exclusion principles. And the parity of the total wave function of the electron or the fermion must be anti-symmetric. With that limitation, we have to think about new additional term called exchange energy. Okay, the exchange energy means if we replace electron one and two, if we exchange these two electrons, actually we cannot distinguish number one and number two electrons. We cannot number in the electrons. So we should think about such a probability. So we have to think about that kind of a new terms to handle the uh, energy of the system correctly. As a result, um, the total system energy is depend on the alignment of the spins. It depends on the sign of the uh, this exchange coupling. The system energy is depends on the relative direction of two spins. That's why we can express the exchange coupling Hamiltonian in the form of the inter, uh, inner product between two spins. And uh, usually we call that is the Heisenberg Hamiltonian or Heisenberg inter uh, exchange coupling. Here, the important thing is in this calculation, if these two electron, the product of two electron implies the overlapping of two wave functions. So if we have a one electron wave function here and the other electron function uh, wave function here, and if the distance is far, this product going to zero. But if we have an electron here and electron here, there is a finite uh, overlap between two electrons and they have non-zero values. So in this exchange coupling, the overlapping between two wave functions are very, very important. Or, in other words, the distance between two atomic atoms 
are very important. Or in solid state, the lattice parameter is important. If the, we extend the lattice parameter by the stress, the overlapping is decreasing. So usually we lost the overlapping of the real function and the exchange coupling is going to small. In other words, if we decrease the distance between atoms, we can increase the uh, exchange coupling. Okay. So, um, please keep in mind, this form of Heisenberg exchange coupling is a very important concept in a ferromagnetism. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic, what is the super exchange. Here, the super means, it's somewhat similar to the exchange coupling, but uh, we need something more. In many uh, magnetic insulator case, we have uh, oxygen between two atoms. For example, here, we have uh, two tension metals here and here, and we have oxygen between them. There are many oxides that are such form. And for example, in a D electron of the transition metal has a such uh, wave functions. And the P, uh, P orbital of electron has such forms, and another D orbital of the other transition metals here. So there is no direct coupling between these two transition metals. But we have an uh, oxygen between them. And look at this. This orbit and this orbit, we have overlapping. And in this case, the spin of this electron is, let's say, up spins. And these spins should be up because of the exchange coupling between them. And then we have up spin here. So we should have a minus uh, down spin in other side. And also, this spin must be down. So, because of this oxygen between two transition metals, so this oxygen, we have a effective coupling between them, between two transition metals. But usually, this super exchange coupling forms antiferromagnetic configuration, so it's kind of antiferromagnetic coupling. For example, here we have a spin here in transition metal, and there is oxygen, and there is another transition metal here. They are antiparallel to these spins. And same thing happens for this, direct, this direction also. They are antiparallel. So, you know, many um, multi insulator case, they uh, the cop original coupling is uh, can be explained by and those coupling strengths is also depends on the distance between two tension metals. So uh, with the variation of temperature or uh, stress or uh, phase, uh, phase change of the uh, these oxides, uh, magnetic properties are also dramatically changed. So usually the uh, magnetic property of the oxide layer. It strongly depends on the lattice parameter also. So uh, when we uh, talk about the ferromagnetic oxide case, super exchange must be considered very carefully. Okay, so next uh, important interaction is called IKKY interaction. Uh, this uh, is the naming from the just a moment. Yeah, uh, four guys: the Rudoman and Kitter and Kashua and Yusha. Those two Japanese guys and this Western guys. So we call this is R K K Y interaction. What is this? Okay, um, the, this IKKY interaction is very important in a layers 
metals and their alloys. Uh, for example, in you know, uh, rare metals, the origin of the ferromagnetism is came from the 4F electrons, not the 3D electrons. This, the 3D electron is important in a transient metals. But in a uh, rare metals, usually we need uh, 4F electrons or 5F electrons. They are too localized. So that means if you have two atoms and the F electron is very well localized. So as we already explained, to obtain the uh, meaningful exchange coupling, two wave functions must be overlapped. But this F electron is too much localized, so the direct exchange coupling is very small. Okay, so the radius of a 4F wave function is only 10% of the lattice spacing. So in this case, if we have a, a localized uh, electron here, and we have also conduction electrons. This kind of s of uh, electrons, and they are very conductive, and they spread out. Usually, the S electron is not spin polarized, but because of this uh, F electron is uh, localized, localized F electron is spin polarized, that means they have uh, uh, not the same probability for the spin up and spin down. They prefer the uh, specific direction of the spins, that's why we call polarized spins. And this electron are uh, interacting with these F electrons. So we have a SF coupling. Because of this F electron, the S electron is also polarized. So we have a energy term, sorry, Hamiltonian of the such a you know, product between two spins, the S electrons and F electrons, or SD coupling. Those are almost the same physics. Because of those coupling, the conduction electron itself is polarized, not very strong, it may be weakly. But because this is a free electron like nature of the conduction electron, they can communicate or interact with other side spins, other side electrons. So that means if one atom is here and if there is some conduction electron, they have some information about these spins. And this conduction electron will get the other one. So those two spins have a finite coupling. That's what we call IKKY interaction. And it is important in the layers of materials. Okay. And uh, this, you know, the, to understand this IKKY interaction, we have to understand about the uh, charge lead distribution due to the uh, EPP. Okay. So let's assume there is some. Um, uh, single impurities inside of the solid state. And if we have a, let's say, a plus charge here, then uh, without impurity, solid state uh, neutral, uh, neutral, but with this extra charge, there is some screening of the minus sign, minus charge around this plus charge. So in outside, uh, the, in a far distance from the impurity, they cannot see this impurity because of this screening. It can be, you can easily imagine those uh, screening by the static case. But uh, because of the Fermi energy of the electron is finite, or 
So for, for me, wavelength of the electron is uh, finite. So cannot, uh, uh, if you think about there is some dynamic motion of this charge, this electron also uh, responds to the motion of this charge. But because of this finite Fermi wavelength, they cannot perfectly screen the uh, extra charge. That is called uh, Friedel oscillation. That's the very important thing in uh, solid state physics. So as a result, this uh, Friedel oscillation, such a screen charge has a oscillation with plus minus plus minus sign. Same thing happens in a mild interaction. If we have a one uh, localized uh, localized and spin polarized F electron here. And because of this F electron, the conduction electron has a small polarization. But those polarization has a strong oscillation in this form. So let's say this is plus spin, minus spin, plus minus. So the strength is going down, but the sign has an oscillation. So it depends on the distance between two spins. This second spin can be parallel or antiparallel, depends on the distance from other spins. So that makes the, the mass property of the layer's metal is very, very complicated. Depends on the lattice parameter or distance between two infinities, the coupling sign can be easily changed. So when we talking about the IKKY interaction, there are two important physics. One is oscillation with the different sign, depends on the distance. And the second one is, is somewhat long range. In a direct exchange coupling, the uh, important thing is the direct overlapping of the wave function. So, the distance dependence is uh, something like exponential. So they are very rapidly, rapidly decreasing the coupling strength. So when we talk about the uh, direct exchange coupling, we usually think about that only the nearest neighbor interaction. But in a uh, IKKY interaction, it's somewhat long age. So they can interact. Uh, between uh, two atoms, which are in a separate, uh, several lattice parameters. Okay. So when we are talking about the long range magnetic coupling, the IKKY interaction is very, very important. And also, okay, so there is some summary. The sign of coupling is changed as a function of distance. So sometimes they form the ferrocoupling, antiferrocoupling, and sometimes we have a helical coupling. The spin is not a parallel or antiparallel, but they are from such kind of uh, very complicated structure. And also in a 3D metals such as ion, the IKKY like interaction is also play a role. So in this case, we call the ST interaction. That means the D electron is localized one, S is the conduction electrons. Yeah, here is the ST interactions. And because of this S interaction, the S electron is spin polarized, and that is important to understand the modern spintronics. And also, in a conduction electron, there, there is some spin polarization, which one is very important in a magneto resistance. Okay. And also, uh, in spin polarization of the conduction electron can be opposite sign of the bulk polarization. That means, this bulk polarization means the total number of spin up and spin down state. But in a conduction electron case, we think about the 
electron fibrillation at the foamy surface or for the S electron. Okay. And also, uh, there is very important concept called the interlayer, interlayer coupling. Interlayer exchange coupling, which one occurred in a two ferromagnetic materials. Okay, um, if we have a ferromagnetic layers and the other layers here, and they are separate with some non-magnetic materials, then the spin direction of this uh, two magnetic layer, let me make it clear. Okay, so we have a two ferromagnetic layer and sandwiched by the magnetic layer. Then uh, the direction of two layer, ferromagnetic layer, can be parallel or anti-parallel. And in this case, there is some finite coupling between two magnetic layer passing through the this normal layer, and that is what called the interlayer exchange coupling. And that is very important in the modern spintronics because those trilayer structure is uh, basic structure of the GMR or TMR. Okay. So I'm going to explain it later again. Okay. So far, um, I explained the original paramagnetism by concept of the exchange coupling or molecular field theory. But in this uh, explanation, we assume the magnetic moment are localized in an atomic site. But in a uh, real metal, there's uh, conduction electrons or S electrons. That is very important one. And also, S electrons are very mobile or they are conductive, actually same meaning. And they are uh, spread out in a uh, phase. That implies there is an easy hopping between two sides. So beta is larger, larger beta. So usually, actually, we already explained S electron has a uh, large beta, but the electron has a small beta. So the um, bandwidth of the S, electro S electron is larger, but the electron is smaller. Or the density of state of the electron is larger, S electron is smaller. So let me summarize. It's a uh, large, more, and let's say bandwidth is also large. More and the density of state more much. They are all connected to each other. And here the D electron is the origin of the spectralization or the paramagnetism. So the D band is important in a uh, in in magnetic properties, but in many cases, let's say. Uh, here is the 4S and 3D energies. When we decrease the interatomic distance, they form the band structure. But as you see here, this is a, a kind of D band. There is some kit of the S band. 
the total band structure is something like this. Okay. And this is the fewer S electrons, fewer S electrons here. Typical behavior of the S electrons. And these are form of the D electrons, but we have something more here. This is the result of the interaction between S band and D band. That's what we call a mixed band or hy hybridization. Okay. And also, there is one important feature. The spin down and spin up, this structure and the structure looks quite the same. But there is a finite difference in our energy. That's what we call exchange speed. So that implies the electron in down spin here, here is the up spins. The total number of down spins is zero than up spins. And this different energy difference, usually we say exchange energy or exchange shift, is the origin of the ferromagnetic exchange in a band, uh, band theory. And why that happens? What's the reason? Okay, we uh, recall the thermodynamic, thermodynamic load concept of the entropy. The ferromagnetic ordering is energetically not uh, favorable. Then why the spin up and spin down band has some shift? Okay. Let's recall the Huns rule again. We uh, have a band structure here. Then, electron start to fill up the band structure from the bottom of the band. Okay. And uh, by, because of the Huns rule, they are starting to uh, fill up the state with the parallel spin first. Okay. But let's see here. Yeah. According to Huns rule, they are starting one spin first. But instead of the, uh, fill up the spin here, compared to here, the energy cost fill up this part is higher. So they are preferred fill up this side instead of the parallel spins. So they are not uh, quite correct when you consider the Huns rule. So what is the correct one? Then if we make a such band shift, then we can start only single spins first. They like for the Huns rule because there is no possible state. So because of this Huns rule and uh, energy minimization, such kind of uh, band shift is energetically favorable. Okay. So actually, that is the result of the competition between kinetic energy, which one is proportional to k square, or this parabolic band structure. This is the shape of the k square. And this k square term is came from the or in this. That is the last thing, yes, but the kinetic energy of the electrons. And this exchange energy is the shift of the band. So it depends on uh, those two energy. If the exchange energy is large enough, then the ferromagnetic phase is stable. 
That's what it called the star criterion. So let's think about this uh, ferromagnetic band structure. Okay. Here the this station is a uh, not density state. And the uh, energy of the total uh, system can be described by the basic uh, shape of the band and the exchange coupling energy. For the spin up, spin down, they have a different sign. So this amount of the energy shift can be explained such band shift. So the total magnetic moment is uh, total number of spin up state and spin down. So when you take in the integral of density of state, we can obtain the total number of electrons. And also this uh, energy difference for uh, the, the sorry. Okay. So let's think about the energy of the ferromagnetic state. That means uh, when they form this ferromagnetic the phase, we have a, uh, this is came from the magnetic moment, and we have a uh, coupling term here. Here, the I is came from the exchange integrals. With this uh, simple model, we can find the energy of the ferromagnetic layer is stable compared to the paramagnetic or non-magnetic or non-magnetic energy when the density of state at the forming surface multiplied by the external exchange integral is larger than 1. If they are smaller than 1, the paramagnetic state is more stable. So that's why the density of state at the Fermi level are very, very important. So we already explained the D band as a large density of state compared to the S electron. So that's why this localization or large density of state cause the formation of the ferromagnetic phase. So the density of state and the lattice spacing, this lattice spacing is uh, of to the density of state also, and the external uh, exchange integral. Each one is came from the exchange coupling, and the overlapping of wave function are also important. So let's think about real band structure, uh, for example, BCC ion, which one is the most typical ferromagnetic material. Um, the next question is about uh, sometimes the spin up uh, number of electrons from spin up or spin down are larger than the other one. Um, what's the preference of the spin up and spin down? Okay, so this uh, spin up, spin down means uh, kind of naming. So, um, yeah. In other words, we call the modality spins or binary spins for the spin up, spin down. Usually, the spin up uh, means when you apply the external magnetic field, they usually prefer the the, the magnetic moment. They prefer the uh, parallel alignment with the external magnetic field. So, in that case, that spin direction or field direction called the modality spins. And the uh, minus spin means the other direction. So usually we say that's the up spin or down spin. But that is the relative direction. 
that's not the uh, absolute direction, the magnetic field. So uh, usually we say the modulated spin is called off spin, but uh, sometimes that the opposite case can be happens. So in sometimes it is very confusing, but uh, it's not uh, very important. The spin up, spin down is kind of relative direction. Okay. Is it okay, Gina? Okay, so this band structure is from the gamma point to H point. They tell us very important property of the ion. But uh, I'm gonna, I'll not explain too much details. But here, look at these two bands. This band is the same, almost same to here. And this two band, almost same to here. And this band is here. So what's the difference between t these two bands? If you shift this band about this amount, sorry. If they uh, shift this band to this amount, this band is almost same to here. And this band is almost the same to here. So this band diagram tell us this uh, the dip main difference between the modulating minor band are just a shift of this amount. This, this is the what we call exchange shift. And the order of magnitude of this exchange uh, shift is order of electron volt. Yeah, here the detail is about two electron volt, but uh, let's say just uh, order of one electron volt. Okay. And um, the one electron volt is uh, quite a uh, typical energy scale, you know, chemistry and, and many uh, important physics. And, okay. So if you uh, plot the density of state of the ion, this is the result. This blue one is corresponding to the uh, down spin and the red one is called for the up spins. Here, here is the formula bell. So the total number of electrons for the red one has more spins. And the number of down spin is less than the up spins. So in this case, the red one is the majority spin or up spins, and the blue one called the minor spin or down spins. Okay. And also, such a large density of state is important to explain the, uh, the ferromagnetism. Okay, so let's back to the simple model of the uh, ferromagnetism materials. Usually, we uh, have a such a simple and the structure is good enough to explain the magnetic property of the ferromagnetic uh, materials. Here is the band shift called the uh, exchange energy difference. And uh, he, we have a modest band and the minor band. Yeah. And the total magnetic moment can be written in this form. Because we, when you take in the integral for the density of state, we can obtain the total occupied number of electrons. 
So those part is total uh, modulus band. Those part are total minor uh, minor electrons. So uh, if the same uh, density of state is zero, but because of those uh, density of state are different, we have a finite m value. And also, this simple model can be uh, explained many things, many magnetic properties. Okay, you know, ion and nickel, this is the very simplified version of the uh, formidable the, the density of state of ion. Let's compare to the real one. Here, the, in a real band, it's very complex structure, but the main thing is here and like this. So it's quite a simple one. Let me write here. This is uh, for the uh, moderate spins, uh, minor spins, and the moderate spins. And so this form, this one is to here, right? So if you think about this model, you can now you can understand the model of this. And in a nickel case, in a nickel case, the number of electron of nickel is uh, the ion is so 27, uh, 26. Anyway, the total number of electron from ion to this two. And if you assume this band does not change it, then if you add up elect more electrons, the family level is increase. So it depends on the composition, we have such form. And then in a nickel, they are almost two uh, here. So if we think of a cup case, we have a more electrons here. So they are all filled the D electrons. So the total number of electron for the majority and minority are the same. So there is uh, no minority. Kappa is uh, no more chromatic materials here. Okay. So there is no reason there is a band shift. In a kappa case, we have a D band. It's not spinpolarized, and they are not chromatic uh, material. So those simple feature, simple uh, band model is very important to explain ferromagnetism in a 3D metals. So more simple model, if we have a, a such band density of state for the 4S and 3D, let's say this is the uh, some simple version of the band, and this is very simple vulnerable uh, S electrons. Okay. And depends on the uh, formula bell or number of electrons. For example, mangan, iron, cobalt, and nickel. As you see here, the density of state of iron is larger. That means they have a strong ferromagnetism. You know, cobalt, this is a little bit small, but they are still strong phenomena. But in a nickel, the density of state is much smaller than the phenomenal property of nickel is relatively weaker than iron or cobalt. Or you can see here the number of electron for majority and minority, minority for the nickel is smaller. So that means the mass of nickel is small compared to the mass of iron. Well, the spin polarization is the difference for the spin up spin down state very large. So the lattice spacing, density of the state are very important in a ferromagnetism. So uh, in a very sim uh, simple band model, density of the state are inversely proportional to the hopping integral of beta or the lattice spacing. So the exchange coupling integral 
is very sensitive function of the uh, this parameter. And so um, when you calculate the uh, exchange integral as a function of the distance, interatomic distance, we have a very uh, famous relation here. When we decrease the, uh, the, the interatomic distance, the nickel, cobalt, and iron has a form the flexible uh, exchange integrals. But in a manga case, they have a negative one, and uh, in, they form the antiferromagnetic. But if we increase the lattice parameter for the iron a little bit by forming the uh, some kind of so, uh, surface or interface um, engineering, we can uh, easily increase the mangan lattice constant by using some, uh, how can I say? Yeah, if we have uh, some substrate here, and if you put the mangan atom here, they form crystal. But in this case, the lattice parameter of mangan is depends on this material. So you can easily increase the lattice parameter of mangan, then you can find the phenomenon mangan phase. So that means the lattice spacing is very important in a surface or interface management. Actually, this surface and interface management also very important in a thin film technology or spintronics. They are usually uh, we made the thin films. So please keep in mind this behavior. The magnetic coupling is very sensitive to the lattice parameter and also band filling. Here is the very famous uh, curve called the slater polling. Okay, here the x-axis is number of electrons from 24, 5, 6, 7, 8. So their corresponding atom, corresponding element of the number of electrons. And the y-axis is uh, Bohr uh, magnetron per atom. Okay. So here, this uh, curve, the mainly this part and this part. Yeah, just a moment. Here, um, in a pure ion, we have a 2.2 bohr magnetron, and in a cobalt, we have a 1.7, and for the nickel, we have a 0.4 magnetron per atom. And not uh, only this uh, single element, we have uh, many, many alloys. For example, here, we have a uh, alloy from iron and chrome, and iron with vanadium, and here is the uh, iron nickel alloy and cobalt iron alloy, nickel cobalt and nickel copper, and, uh, cobalt iron. And as you see here, despite, uh, uh, despite the different element, different alloys, if you uh, plot that, com uh, we, we, we can convert the composition to the number of electrons. For example, in a 50-50 aluminum and the alloy between the iron and chrome, yeah, that means here, if, if you have uh, this one, the total number of electron per atom is corresponding to here. And if you have 75% uh, of the iron and 25 here, we made something here, and so on. So, the important thing is all those alloys have a same curve. They are falling to the same curve. 
actually single curve or single line actually. Okay. And also one important thing is here. The slope of this side is plus one. What's the meaning of plus one? The number of the, the march moment of the single spin is four magnetron. So when you increase number of electron, one electron per atom, you have a spin polarization for the one more electron here. And if you increase one more electron, we have a here. And in this side, we have a minus one. So that means the number of, when you increase number of electron, the spin polarization or minus moment of the atoms is decreased by one, by one electron. And yeah, if you uh, make a alloy between iron and cobalt, yeah, then uh, we have a highest mild moment here between the iron and, and cobalt. And also, uh, if we make alloy between iron and nickel, 50-50, the mild moment is uh, 1.7 bromantron, and friction is quite similar to the cobalt value. And those two alloys, these alloys and cobalt, it's the same uh, electrons per atoms. So this stratopolin curve tells us very important property of the these 3D metals, 3D uh, ferromagnetic metals. Okay, let's back to the uh, band structure again. In a BCC and FCC, the band structure is a little bit different. But we can simplify this band with a very simple 3, uh, 4S and 3D bands. Okay, so I want to recall this figure again. This is the called the liquid band model. In a real material, the band structure depends on the number of electrons and the crystal structures. But let's assume the band is not changed. Band shape is uh, uh, rigid, it's not changed. But the, only the number of electron is only allow, uh, it's not, uh, the, when you uh, make the alloy, the number of electron is changing. So from the ion to nickel, we can add uh, more electrons. And this is uh, actually, if we say this is a, uh, uh, Ion 50, nickel 50, it's almost the same as the cobalt. So with this uh, band structure model, you can see when you increase the number of electrons to the, from ion to be more and more, the total mild moment is getting maximized. But when you touch here, the top of the, this D band, then, if we add more electrons, the mild moment is getting smaller. And when you peel up oops, this part fully, then there's no mild moment at all. So this simple band structure and can explain the overall behavior of this stratopolin curve. Okay. And there's some uh, deviation, something like this. There are many uh, different curves. The mainly they are came from the different crystal structure, or that means they have a different band structure. So, uh, Actually, you don't need uh, to remember all these details, but just to keep in mind, the marked moment of 3D metals, 3D metals can be explained by 
this stratopolling curve or the rigid band model. We may miss the very detailed feature, but you can uh, understand the, the, those important behavior of the alloy or the band structure in a pair of Okay. And um, this is the uh, final, final view graph of this chapter. In this uh, best of state model of the 3D metals, here, uh, in a copper case, from the copper to vanadium, or from vanadium to copper, the number of electrons is increasing this way. And this simple band structure, we need uh, four parameters. One is the bottom of the S-band, first band, and bottom of the 3D band, and form energy, and top of the 3D band. And those plots, those symbols represent the water each materials. And also in you know, iron cobalt nickel, we have uh, two energies for the D-band bottom and the top because the spin polarization. Yeah, actually, the in this case, the S band is a uh, uh, we have a little spin polarization or uh, exchange split. So with this very rough sketchy can easily understand the uh, physical parameters of uh, the 3D metals. And between these two materials, we can interpolate the, such energy values. Also here, in a copper case, copper case, the Fermi level, the, the top of the D-band is bel below the Fermi level means the 3D band is fully occupied. So, in a copper case, the metal is not spin polarized uh, anymore. So with this uh, this plot and the slater polling curve, you can understand many many parts of the city transition metals and especially the iron and cobalt and nickel. Okay. So this is the uh, last chapter of the origin page of the magnetism. So um, I'm gonna move on to the uh, new topics in the uh, next, next lecture. Okay, so I think it's time uh, for the questions. Yeah, you may ask any questions about uh, not only today's lecture but uh, uh, in the previous lectures also. I mean this one, the factory, it is a uh, uh, energy unit, so you know, band of such calculations. Just Yeah, it's, I don't remember the detailed definition of the hot tree, but it's a kind of a, uh, uh, energy unit. Uh, yeah, you can you can uh, find in you know, Google. Sorry about that. Let's maybe put it to. Uh, the one chance question is uh, what's the difference of the 
Okay. Okay. Um, you know, for or layers materials, the direct exchange coupling is not important. The main coupling is came from the IKKY. But in a 3D metals, uh, Heisenberg exchange is more important. So let's say 3D layers. It's very important, but it's uh, less important. Here, more important, and they are less important in the magnetic properties. But, yeah, the IQI interaction is uh, necessary to uh, explain the spin polarization of the S electrons or uh, the conducting of the 3D metals. So it's, it's not, uh, uh, in, in 3D metals, usually we name by SD interaction instead of IKQI. It's a bit different concept, but there are many common points. Any other questions? Uh, do you mean this screen line? This screen line? Um, I don't remember this was the meaning of these green lines, but probably uh, when we consider some kind of uh, some additional contribution like uh, uh, some speed of coupling, or I don't know exactly, but uh, yeah, actually I took this picture, uh, this plot from some somewhere. I don't remember the. Uh, what is the source of these features? And I didn't catch the the detailed explanation. So, frankly speaking, I don't know what's the meaning of this uh, green one and the red one. I'm sorry. Probably a different calculation or different, uh, contribution of some uh, not the main uh, main part. The important thing is when you see this kind of denser state, yeah, actually you cannot understand such very details. It's not easy. But just to think about this behavior and this behavior. So this, that means this is the D electron, came from the D electron. This such as mainly came from the S electron. Many case, that's very, uh, Crude approximation is good to understand the basic property. But in order to understand the uh, very details, you need to uh, understand the very uh, details of each, each uh, structures. But this uh, small p is, is came from uh, other direction of the vendors. Like uh, here, this is the this kind of behavior is only for from gamma to h direction. But if we uh, take a look at other directions, we have a more structure, so we have a more peak. That's not it. Uh, Uh, by the way, uh, we don't have a class uh, this Wednesday because it's uh, 
national holiday for the voting, but we don't have a class. Don't confuse it. You may use microphone. Okay, that is a good question. Um, for the super exchange, yeah, in a super exchange, such uh, interatomic material are essential ingredients in a super exchange. But it's uh, not necessarily uh, option. Maybe the nitrogen can be played a similar role. But as you see here, such P orbital is very important. So uh, many nitride or oxygen uh, oxide has a super exchange usually. But uh, without such a, uh, P orbital materials, uh, we didn't uh, naming the super exchange. Yeah. But uh, I'm not 100% sure, but that's I understand. We need some kind of uh, uh, some uh, intermediate materials. So the important thing, thing is the electron is exchanged or shared by the overlapping orbitals between two sides, and we need some p-like band. Changyang asked me very, very difficult question. Actually, uh, I didn't explain any details of the band structure, but I want to emphasize the, the main feature of the band structure. So we did that, uh, especially for the magnetic property. If you understand the D band, the difference of the D band and S band and the sense split, we can use many, many things, but uh, not all the manic properties. We just touch the very important and the uh, base properties. But uh, when you make an alloy, uh, like a stratopolling curve, 
We are still uh, using the band structure model. With, even we uh, didn't care about the details. Just to think about very simple uh, feature like uh, this uh, simple model. We can explain the many things, but uh, we cannot explain all the manifolds. And uh, when we have uh, some doping, that means a small uh, additional element to the uh, mat uh, matrix material. Uh, my property doesn't change much usually, but uh, other properties can be dramatically changed. For example, you know, iron is a steel. The number of uh, the component of carbon can dramatically the, uh, the, the metallic property of the uh, ions. Or if you add a small silicones or small carbons, they change the uh, like uh, uh, elastic uh, property of the ion or the stiffness, and you can change many, many things. But usually they cannot explain by the band structure. They can explain like uh, uh, grain boundary and uh, imperfections, and there are many, many things you, you need to understand such details. The, the band, band structure tells us many, many things, but not all of them. For example, you know, understand the, the human body, if you understand the basic property of organs or bones or muscles, you can understand many things of the human body, but not all of them. In order to understand all functional of the human body, you need much more. It's the same. In a solid state, band structure feature tells us many, many things, but not all the metallic properties, all the magnet properties, uh, sorry, the uh, material properties. In order to explain the experimentally observed uh, material properties, you need uh, some imperfection part of the uh, materials, and sometimes that is uh, more important. So you need to uh, learn about uh, some defect in a crystal structure and the, grain the role of the grain boundary and many, many things. For example, you know, ion, ion, if you add just a small, let's say, 1.1% uh, of a uh, material like chrome or vanadium or mangan or many, many materials, you can change the property of ion dramatically. But if you think about that, just 0.1% uh, of atomy, uh, only one uh, depend per thousand ion atoms, right? So that means in order to calculate the band structure of such small dopings, you need at least a thousand ion atoms in, a, in your calculations. So uh, it's not easy. And the, even though we calculate the band structure of this uh, alloys or uh, materials, uh, you cannot catch the uh, big difference between the pure ions. So uh, even though they this small amount of uh, uh, alloying or doping changes the, the, the material property a lot, uh, it's not uh, affects the band structure not that much. But for the uh, semiconductor case, small doping uh, changed many things because they changed the number of charge carrier. So the electric property can be dramatically changed with a small doping. So that's the different point. My answer is not quite uh, enough for China's questions, but uh, this is a very important point. Thank you for the good, good question. Okay, so I think it's time's up, so let me finish this class uh, uh, here. And I'm going to upload uh, my lecture note also. And 
we don't have a, a class in Wednesday and see you next Monday. Okay, bye.